everybody, this is Marty Smith for mzonereport.com. I'm going to run through a few hands here where I'm playing pocket pairs, a variety of pocket pairs, and given these tournament situations, many of them are played differently, and I'm just going to go through and explain why I made these moves. Now, here I've already doubled up in this tournament. I am green mzone, you can see here on my tournament indicator scale. I do like to raise pretty much any pair from any position if I'm the first one in. If I'm in later position, I generally like to call with lower pairs like this, and I basically invite other people to come into the pot, just hoping that I'm going to hit a, f uh, a cheap flop. But in a situation like this, well, if I'm coming in first, I can also represent a big flop, maybe like this one here. And in fact, I'm up against an aggressive player who comes out betting all the time. Look at his aggress aggression factor here is 6.0. I know this guy's going to bet, but I'm going to actually play this and make it look like I've hit something here. Okay, he bets, and it's a baby bet, so I'm going to re-raise him here, make it look like I was just setting him up, trying to get more chips out of him. And with aggressive players, this type of play works. But keep in mind, even if I have to fold here and now, I am still going to be green M zone. Yes, it's a risky play, but I'm using profiling here more than I am my hand. And I actually like to show that to him because I wanted to show that I did have a read on him. Pocket tens, middle position. I am green M zone. Looks pretty early in the tournament. Maybe about the 25th hand. Min raiser here few people to act behind me. Now, I could re-raise here, but just because there's more people to act behind me, with a mid-pair like this, I do like to call and see the flop. And as you can see, somebody has raised behind me. Now, thing is, this is normally going to be a fold for me, but I decide to call based on, once again, my opponent's profile. He's a gambler. It's out to be a pretty good call, but, yeah, I mean, that was risky. That was more of a profiling play. Usually, though, that is a fold. So I did want to throw in a controversial hand there in that uh, it did work out for me, but uh, I was more or less going up against somebody who I knew would, wouldn't be that strong. Pocket sixes in the small blind. Uh, I was just going to call the small blind, but the button raises here. It could be a steal. Now, I'm out of position. Uh, there's somebody to act behind me here. Really because I'm in the small blind here and I call, I must hit my set. Now I do hit my set. The only way to play this hand is to hit a set because usually the flop is going to be tough to play with a, with a low pair like this and somebody coming in strong. Now he's got a thousand chips. Dude, you, he's got to know that I've got a hand. Let's see if he can add two plus two here. So we checked. I tried to trap him into betting here. Um, I put in a, a bet of 320 into 2080. Even if he comes over top, I pretty much got a call. Again, I'm still going to be in the green M zone no matter what happens in this hand. So it's not a GCI hand. And uh, I can play that way. He does call. He's got 700 chips left. So he made that pot pretty big. Let's see what he had. He had ace high. He called with ace high. Really sad. Pocket, okay, pocket six is here. I'm the first one in. Again, pick your spots, but raise. If you're the first one in, even if you got a low pair, you should be raising if you're going to play. Don't limp because it's basically just telegraphing that you've got a low pair. So I like to raise with these hands because you can always represent something big just in case somebody calls you with a lower pair themselves, maybe like sevens or eights. You can possibly take them off of their hand after the flop. Um, so keep in mind that when you do raise with these pairs, you should have enough to not only bet, but continuation bet. And you should still have enough in your stack afterwards to fold if somebody comes over, over the top. So in that sense, that's how you should sort of determine when you come into the hand with lower pairs. If you're too short to do that, then you should be folding or shoving it all in. And a lot of that depends on the tournament stage. Again, pocket fives here. I'm coming in for a raise. Pot's 1,500. I went three times a blind. I'm not so aggressive with raises early in the, early in the tournaments uh, with these middle pairs. But when you have some chips to spare, hey, that's a good flop for pocket fives. He checks to me. Pot's 2,300. 
Now, to me, you know, that flop is unlikely to hit him. Who knows? He might have called with ace-deuce or something like that. Later stages of the tournament here. I am red M-zone with pocket sevens here. Uh, somebody limps in, making the pot 4,300. This is what I was saying about, you know, how you... Uh, you play with these pairs uh, given the stage of the tournament. It's a later stage. I'm red M zone. To me, I want to isolate a guy here. About pocket pairs, you just have to uh, shove it all in there and get heads up. Pocket nines. Wow, I decided to limp here because this guy had just lost a hand and he became short stacked and I just knew he was going to shove. So I wanted to get him heads up decent situation although I wasn't getting great I think it was like one and a half to one but still I had lots of chips to spare and uh, I hit my set I don't think actually he made a mistake in uh, in shoving with that hand pocket jacks hey we all know how to play these uh, inside joke there look at that all in call all in um, I am green M zone if I call this I'm going to be uh, if I call this and lose I will I will be possibly orange or red that is a GCI hand that means I have to fold given the pressure here I would have called behind and finished in third on that hand pocket eights I'm first in what do you do you raise Now, you might want to play these differently depending on the profiles of players, in particular weak or aggressive players. And, um, you know, players of uh, who are capable of coming over the top, yeah, sometimes you gotta, uh, you got to play these differently. I had to fold this hand to pressure pocket threes because uh, one guy went on all in, another guy called him ace eight. I don't know what that idiot was doing, uh, but he actually won that hand. I actually eliminated him later in this tournament. Pocket sevens here in the big blind. I am green M zone. Um, if the blind shoves here, that's 10,000. That's a bit too much, so I would probably fold. But the small blind, I want to get the small blind heads up in here because he only has 3,500, uh, less than 10% of my stack. Easy call here. He's got 8, 9, so I'm in good shape. But actually, so is he. I hit my set. Damn, ouch, he hits it. So that was a good call on my part, but you know what? He actually made a good play there too. Uh, nothing wrong with shoving with 8-9 as opposed to this guy in the previous hand here who was donking around with ace-8. That was a stupid play. That was a good play, and I made a good call too. Both plays were, were correct. That's just how the chips fall sometimes in tournaments. Hey, pocket pairs, if you want to learn how to play more hands and win more online tournaments come and sign up for my free video series at mzonereport.com this is marty smith signing off take care ciao